Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. You found it. The greatest podcast about window cleaning that's produced by me that's done right now. You're here. You found it. Awesome, thanks. If you're new and it's your first time checking us out, thanks for stopping by, man. My name is Jersey. Nice to meet you. Hopefully you like it. It's not too terrible, and you'll want to go back and watch some of our old episodes. We are almost to 40 episodes now. This is a weekly podcast, too, so it's available via iTunes, Google Play, uh, SoundCloud, and TuneIn. Uh, wherever you want it, it should be there. It will also be uploaded to YouTube, so if you want to watch, certainly do that. Um, if you are part of the nation, if you're somebody who watches every single week, if you comment on everything, you give us a thumbs up, you've subscribed, you've done it all, what is up? It is because of you that we get to do the show, so thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And if you're next level, one of the cool kids on top of that, and you order supplies through me, then I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everybody who orders through us here at WCR. And people especially who order through me. And with that being said, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. So if you got questions, let me know. Shoot me a text. 862-312-2026. <sighs> All right. So we got that out of the way. We have a super awesome, awesome show for you today. We are talking with Lars from Nice Job. The guys who were all the talk at every show we ever do. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going, Josh? It's yeah, it's going good. Thanks. Thanks for having us on today. Yeah, for sure. It literally is mind-blowing when I'm going to get this out of the way. I know I always tell people I'm not all salesy and we don't want to do a show just about Nice Job, but I want to say something. Nice Job is probably one of the best pieces of software or programs that have come out in I don't know how many years. I mean, we ran it. Uh, I don't want to say we because we weren't really involved, but uh, it was run through ICE, the last show that you guys were at. And I want to say there was almost 80 reviews. We got five star, 80 reviews in Google just in the show and just using uh, Nice Job. So that's amazing. I mean, that, those numbers are mind boggling to me. Um, it that really... was a pretty good weekend. Yeah. And that was all in two days, too. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's unbelievable. And now they can take all those reviews and use them for the next show. So you can think about how much better the next show is going to be now. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to kind of have you on. We talked at ICE, but is people get reviews, um, if they get reviews, they got five of them a year, right? Just doing it on their own. It's super hard to do, but then they don't know kind of what to do once they get the reviews. They just kind of sit there in limbo and they go, please work, please do something for me, you know? First off, other than, you know, having a software program, what does a review mean to people? Like, what have you seen? You've dealt with more reviews than anybody I know, like what, what do reviews mean for companies? It's kind of like the, the golden ticket of marketing, really. Yeah. Like, you know, in the past, marketing was, and it still sadly continues to be for some circles, just all about how much money you spend and not about, you know, what kind of work you do. Yeah. And that's why we started up. We saw all these companies that do amazing work, but they don't get credit for it. You know, business owners who are out there and they're doing their best, they're excelling above their competition, but no one knows about it. And without reviews, no one will. Yeah. So that that's the measure of the reputation. You know, now with you know social proof, with reviews, companies that do really great work, they can get the reputation they deserve. And yeah. and that's cool. That rewards the these guys who are working harder than the other guys. Yeah, and referrals themselves have always been huge kind of in the service industry, but we're getting more and more to like the Amazon, you know, where you can plug in response a bid and I can have somebody book a job and do the, get the work done and I'll never even talk to them. It just is set up. They book it. They set it up. They got the price. They do everything and people are okay with that. I mean, I always say to people when they say, well, no, people want to see me in person. I go, well, have you ever bought anything on eBay, anything on Amazon? Because if so, you don't know who you bought it from, you know, and it's the same kind of world where all of a sudden now it's just these ads all over and you don't know what ads are real. Photoshop is Photoshop and, and you know, five star reviews or just reviews in general, it kind of puts it like a perspective of realism, right? Like if a hundred people reviewed you five star, that means you have trust. You know, I've never even used you, but now you have trust because of all these other people who have used you. Yeah. And the level of trust is like, uh, probably a lot of the guys have heard this stat before because it's been used quite a few times, but 
88% of customers trust a review as much as a personal recommendation from a buddy. Wow. So, you know, like you're always talking to your customers. You want them to, to recommend you to a friend. That's cool. You know, recommendations to a friend, that's awesome. We want that. Yeah. What about if that customer can recommend you to a thousand friends? One <laughs> right. review. You know, yeah. it's the same thing. They're, they can recommend you not just to one friend, but to all their friends and people they don't know with a 30 second act. That's crazy. That's powerful stuff. And it's out yeah. there. I mean, I don't know if you know of any like expiration on reviews, but reviews kind of in the world of, you know, the internet have not been around for hundreds of years, you know, so we don't know will they fall off eventually and that kind of thing. But as of now, I mean, when you get a review, you could be selling jobs in that review 10 years from now. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of a so Google's actually trying to create more relevancy for reviews right now. Um, so they've been playing around with things where they devaluate reviews over time. Mm. It doesn't mean your reviews disappear; they still are there, right. but they get buried, and uh, Google doesn't give as much uh, attention to them anymore. So pretty much any reviews that are past that three to four month range, uh, we find start getting devaluated a little bit, wow. and even consumers. You know, consumers look at reviews. And if they see a review, there was a recent stat, I think it was 73% of um, consumers feel that reviews less, more than three months old are less relevant, huh. uh, which, which, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but yeah. it means that getting reviews now has to be a continual part of the marketing process. Right. Like you can't just get 50 of them and say, hey, I'm set. Let yeah. me just sit on those 50 reviews. Let's yeah. sit back, yeah. And that makes sense yeah. too. I mean, it, the company you were, you know, six months ago, a year ago is not who you are now. And if I saw somebody who was like, oh, a whole bunch of good reviews a year ago, but then nothing, that would kind of be, it would make me leery to not really believe those as much because lots of things could change. You know, who did the guy sell it? Did I mean, you know, that happens a lot. You know, what happened to it? So there's something with that to be kind of fresh and always getting them in. And But that's the hard part. I mean, everybody kind of has all the hats on They're, They do the marketing, they do the HR, they do the, the, um, job themselves, you know, everybody's got all this stuff to do. So how do they kind of get these reviews? And that's kind of where you come in as far as nice job goes, but, but tell everybody who doesn't know nice job, like tell them what it is and give them kind of the, the synopsis on it. Yeah. So we make it really easy for you to get more reviews. Uh, that's the, the big picture, but it goes beyond that. So, like you said, getting reviews is tough. Um, you know, 13% of com com companies actually ask for reviews. That means that, you know, 87% of companies don't ask. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of crazy right on its own. Yeah. Um, but asking for reviews is kind of tough too, because how do you ask? How do you right. make it easy for the customer to to leave the review? Because let's face it, you know most of these review sites don't really make it easy to to actually get your customers out there. Right. Uh, and then the customer has to do it on their own device, which is kind of awkward. So then you've got to somehow get that you know in the context of the customer with their device leaving the review. Right. And then when you do ask, what if it's the wrong time? You know, what if they're busy? What if they forget? How are you following up? How are you not irritating them with follow-ups? Like, you yeah. know, maybe you, you set some, you know, uh, email sequence to go out to the customer afterwards and they leave a review and then you hit them three more times saying, hey, would you leave us a review? Well, that's just frustrating. Yeah. Uh, so nice job takes care of all of that. Like, we ask them in the right way at the right time for a review we can match up incoming reviews with your existing customer records, which is really cool. And this is something that's really different with Nice Job. We just don't collect your reviews. Our software can actually match up your incoming reviews with your existing customers. Wow. And that way we know who to follow up with with friendly reminders and who's already left a review so we don't have to follow up. So we can have it as a great experience for them. So yeah, it automates that whole process. Yeah. Yeah. But, wow. So that's the one thing that, that I find so stinking interesting is that the automation side of it, right? Like I've never, ever, ever followed up on a review ever. I mean, if I, I ask them politely, but like you said, you don't, I, I'm not going to give you money to do a review because then that crosses the line to buying a review. And then that technically is not valid for Google. If they find out, they'll punish you like all the little things. So I would do the same thing that everybody does like, Oh, 
we're a small company, you know, I, I'd, I'd love a review from you on uh, Google or one of the other major platforms. It really mean a lot to us. And it's all nice. They'll go, oh, yeah, when I get around to it, I'll do it. They're going to forget it. They got clean windows now. They got it's passed, you know, it's that kind of common courtesy in the front foreground, but but not that follow up part. But but nice job. They it sends out emails, right? They they automatically generate plight. Kind of give us a script of one of these emails. What does it say? So we try to touch them, the customer first, actually, when possible, with a text message. Uh, so big thing about asking for reviews, you want to get them at peak excitement. So, you know, you, you just done the job for the customer. The work is beautiful. That's when you really want to ask your first invite. And uh, the best way to do that at that point in time, we found, is through text messaging when possible. So nice job connects to them first through a text message. And really cool, when we send the text message, you can also attach photos to your invites. So now the customer gets a text message with an actual photo of your completed work or your crew working there on the job site, mm. which makes it really personal. Yeah. Uh, and we get a way higher conversion rate because now this isn't just some automated text message. It's actually, hey, this is a picture of my house. Yeah. You know, the, the guy's engaged. Yeah. And then... After the text message, then we follow up with the emails. Uh, so the system detects you know, whether or not they've left a review. If they haven't, it'll figure out the best time to invite them. So it schedules all the timing for you. It spaces them out automatically based on when it thinks is going to be the most productive for asking for that review. And then I'll send them a series of emails until they leave the review and then we stop the emails. Wow. But that's only kind of the first half. Like that's just the... The tip of the iceberg is you you want to get the reviews, but then what you do with the reviews, that's that's the next step. Yeah, and that's the thing that, like I said, a lot of people they just once it's there they sit there, and like you told me, they just kind of lose relevancy. I mean, they're always there. People can always see there's 500 reviews or whatever, but they don't do what they're supposed to do, and that's really where people lose it. We 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 talk about reviews all the time. Like reviews create referrals, and referrals will always be. 50% of your advertising and it's free. I mean, for the most part to get people to trust you, the cost of acquisition for that is just not anywhere close to what it would be to go out there and get somebody new. So they're hugely important, but people don't get the next step. They don't know what to kind of do with, with reviews and, and you, you have suggestions for that. What, what are the, what should people be doing once they get this kind of reviews? Get it in front of your customers. You know, that this is your best piece of marketing content you have. Yeah. Um, nothing you say about your company is going to be as powerful as what your customers say about your company. Yeah. It's just bottom line, you know. They're, your future customers are going to trust a review much more than your salesman. Uh, so you got to get these reviews in front of your potential customers. Which, you know, that can be a bit of a process. Um, obviously, online, like social media, that's huge. Uh, a lot of guys I know, especially in, in this industry, a lot of guys will hire a company to do social media posting. You know, and there's nothing bad about that. Yeah. But what are you putting on your social media channel? You want to engage your, your visitors, right? And what do your visitors want to see? Well, they probably want to see something real, authentic, true about your company. Reviews and photos. So we take your reviews, we match them up with the job site photos, we put them on your social media, and that all happens automatically. And the engagement that you get off that is awesome. Yeah. Um, you get real genuine conversations about your work going. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, what would you say towards, and we've done, we've done a show about bad reviews, but what would you say about bad reviews? Like, Do you run into them a lot through kind of your process, or what does that do? to your company like what's the best way to handle a negative review in your eyes respond right away um you know no no one wants to take a bad review and kind of sweep it under the rug yeah. uh and that's that's not something we encourage people to do either like we're all about helping companies that do great work mm -hmm. so bad re reviews might happen you know it, who knows? Maybe the guy yeah. was having a bad day. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe something went wrong. Right. But respond and take care of it. You know, contact the customer. See if you can turn that into a great review. Most of the time, our experience with bad reviews is one genuine phone call listening to the customer, uh, not trying to win the conversation, 
but actually listening to why the customer feels that way yeah. and then responding to him and trying to deal with his concern. Some of our best reviews are from customers that initially were going to leave a negative one mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, we, we showed that we cared. So, you know, show that you care to the customers, turn a bad review into a good one. And even if you get one or two or three bad ones, um, it's not going to kill you because, frankly, people like authentic review profiles. So if you've got 100 five-star reviews, chances are someone's going to look at your review profile and go, so he's got 100 buddies. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. got them all to leave five stars. What did he do so, with the negative ones? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that especially when you can generate as many reviews as as people can, it floods those. So that one, if you have three reviews and one of them's bad, that's thirty three percent. That's a big deal. But when you have a hundred or two hundred reviews, one negative re- review, like you said, just kind of builds credibility to it. I mean, we've all been in business long enough to know there is no way you can please everybody. There's just not. I mean bending over backwards still is just not enough for some people and it's just the world we live in you know so and uh a not so positive review like you said if you respond quick enough where you say hey oh mrs johnson i'm so sorry that you felt this way you know let me know email me your uh you know or i'll send you um a gift certificate so you can try us for free next time for us to hopefully change your opinion and however you address that even shows them and everybody else that, wow, this review really was bad. If you jump on and say, Mrs. Johnson, you're so stupid. You know, I can't believe you'd say that stuff. You know, you're lucky we did. Then all of a sudden people are like, whoa, like this is not a good thing. But you can turn a negative review positive just in the way that you respond to it. Josh, you're pretty mean to Miss, Mrs. Johnson right there. That was, I, yeah, it was uh, I can't brutal. She did that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rough. And, and the cool <laughs> thing is on, on the review sites like Google and stuff, your responses are all public. So, you know, your response can actually, it kind of gets into another conversation, but your responses to that review really show the personality of your company. And people Mm -hmm. look at those responses, especially if it's a negative review. Um, So it's an awesome opportunity for great PR responding to your reviews there. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. If if you just let it sit there and that negative review has got no comments, it makes you wonder. I mean, people are so critical on that type of thing nowadays where they weren't before where, you know, if, if, somebody said to them oh you should use xyz company they were pretty good you know prices were a little high but they were good that technically isn't a five-star review right so even when people give referrals that way it's it almost works the same way so it's, yeah it's it's pretty interesting it's it's interesting to me too and if you've looked at stuff with i know you have but anybody who's watching or listening if you've looked at reviews or even the reviews you have what are you doing with them like that like that to me is the hardest part they just get lost you know, they just get like, oh, I got one, and it just sits there and then sits on the shelf. It's like getting a Babe Ruth baseball. You put it on a shelf and forget you got a Babe Ruth baseball, you know? Yeah. I, we see that so many times in companies with awesome reviews, and no one ever sees them. Uh, so get them out there. Get them on your social media sites. Get them on your website. Um, you know, that that's kind of the bare minimum basics. Uh, nice job, of course, you know, as a gratuitous plug uh does that for you yeah. uh it makes it look pretty awesome when we get it out on your website too you just pop in this little widget onto your website and all your new reviews get published straight out to your website and because we match your reviews with photos of your work that you take while you're on the job site it's it's almost like little customer stories and yeah. they all get published onto your website published onto your social media and once again the, the photos when it goes to the social media um, so a text post on social media kind of sucks, honestly, yeah. like you get no engagement. grab your attention, right? Yeah. But you get that, that picture of your work and then right below that, the genuine customer review, um, that that's fantastic. And yeah. you're building trust. You're going to get conversions. You're going to get traffic. You're going to get engagement. Uh, Google loves it. You're going to get search engine traffic, uh, like search engine boosts in your rankings. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a win-win getting it out there. They're huge. So Now, besides nice job, what do you recommend for people to just, if people say, hey, maybe I'm not ready to kind of try your software yet, but I want to know some tips. Like what tips would you have for these people to get reviews on their own? Like what have you seen that really works or doesn't work? Ask right away. Um, 
you know, uh, some people like you're, you, everyone's trying to put this review process into their workflow. And, and I know a lot of companies we've talked to, they do the job and then once a month they'll go through and they'll ask for reviews, uh, but you've lost your window. Um, yeah. ask, ask right away. As soon as the job's done, get the customer, uh, you know, encouraged to leave the review right away. That that makes a huge difference. We find our conversion rates go through the roof if we can ask while we're on the job site. Wow. That's one thing yeah. too, like you said, statistic wise, but people just don't, you'd be surprised what you could have accomplished by just asking because people mm-hmm. feel like they want to help you, you know, especially if you get to know them and you've been talking to them, just asking them is a huge first step. Yeah, it is. And then try to make it easy for them to leave a review. Like, you know, you, you can get a link directly to your Google review site. You know, try to make it easy so it's not like they're fumbling around trying to figure out how to do right. it. Um, you know, anytime they encounter a pain point, like we find that, like, you know, if they have to log into a service and then they don't have their password and then and then you've lost them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, try to make it easy. It's a little bit tough to do that on your own because you need software to be able to, you know, kind of make that process easier. But right. As much as possible. If you're doing it on your own, try to make it easy as possible for them to leave a review. Yeah. yeah. When you're in the service business for a long time, you realize that just humanity in general is lazy. And like people are going to be like, oh, no, I'm not lazy. I'm telling you, the easier you can make something, the better. Like here, I'll give you an example. A, a, a simple website is out there and it says, click this button to get pricing. They'll never click the button. They'll send you an email like, could you give me pricing? It was just a button. Well, yeah, but it was a button, and then I had to click another button. And the real reason was there's just too many steps. They just lost interest. So the easiest, quickest, to the point kind of thing, you know, the best. Now, one other thing with reviews, what can you do if somebody – so um, you have a satisfaction form, and you want to review just so you understand what's going on. What if somebody gives you really nice words? Can you turn that – is there even a way to turn that into – an actual review or is it just kind of something for your, your memory to, to kind of pat yourself on the back? That is a great question. Um, and this is kind of one of the, the things we talk about with the satisfaction forms. You have limited points of contact where you can actually ask for something from your customer. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, harsh on surveys. Surveys serve a purpose, yeah. um, but you're using up a super valuable customer ask to get something that's only internal facing. Right. Uh, and, and yeah, you can take that survey result. They left you some kind words. You can put it on social media. It's not going to have the same trust factor because it didn't come from a recognized review source. Yeah. Um, we, we encourage customers to, you know, companies to ask their com- customers for reviews because then you get the two in one. You get the survey result but you also get it public facing. Right. Um, and obviously that's a bit of a leap of faith because you're putting a lot of trust into um, the work that you do. But if you do great work, you know, get it out there. Uh, yeah. Surveys, you know, nothing bad, but you're going to get the internal analytics reviews. You're going to use, get the best marketing tool that you can have as your company. Yeah. Yeah. And I, if you, so when my, this is now 10 years ago, but when my site first came up and I built the site myself, so I thought it was awesome. Nobody else, everybody looks, thought it was, you know, horse poop. But um, I would put, every time I get a review, I would write the review and then put their name after it. And I would put that in a big thing. And then it was a review page. It was just text that was on there. And I never really thought about it. But you could put anything you want. No one's going to trust those reviews if they don't come from a reputable source. I mean, I could have put... I could have put a hundred of them, you know, Mrs. Jones says, uh, I'm amazing. And she can't believe how great these windows look. You can do those without having them be actually posted by the person themselves. And that's where a lot of like the review sites, you say Google, every Google is where it's at. Nobody, you know, if, if you have a fact like, Oh, you should Google it. Nobody ever says, Oh, you should Bing that. No one says that, you know, Google <laughs> is the king. So getting yeah. those reviews on that type of site where, Everybody knows I can't put a Google review under somebody else's account. I mean, you maybe could do one and start one fake account, but you're not going to do a multiples of them and start multiple accounts just to do reviews. You know, it just really, really speaks volumes that way. Yeah, it does. And, you know, Google reviews, in our opinion, is still the gold standard, will continue to be so. But Facebook reviews 
have some real cool potential right now yeah. too. Um, I don't know how many of our, you know, the ones who are listening have experimented much with Facebook reviews, but what happens when you leave a review for another company on Facebook, all your friends see a little notification that says, you know, Josh just reviewed nice job uh, hmm. and gave him five stars. Yeah. So if you can get your customers to review you on Facebook as well, um, that has a, a super viral nature because every one of their buddies, so yeah. their neighbors, their friends. Yeah. yeah. And they trust that person that. already. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I guess I never thought of Facebook is in the top like three. And this is not, uh, if you actually look at the numbers, this isn't quite right, but this is in my brain, but it is uh, Google itself and then YouTube and then Facebook, those three, maybe not even in that order. I think Facebook's creeping up to two, even close to one, but you're on Facebook. Look at, we know the analytics because I'm on Facebook all the time. We have lots of groups that we kind of, you know, run and I want to make sure we can help people and blah, blah, blah. So I'm on there all the time, but with analytics, a normal person is on Facebook like 10 plus times a day. I mean, the, the idea and concept that you have a rotating feed that if you're not on it all the time, you're going to miss something creates people to get on it. It's a time waster. It's a, I'm going to the bathroom. What am I going to do? You know, they're on there all the time. So getting that in front of uh, Facebook is huge. And I, I didn't even really think about, I've never personally pushed reviews on Facebook because I've never really thought about it that way. But but that that's yeah. that's huge. It's different how people are consuming them on Facebook. So on on Google, it's obvious how you're consuming it. You're googling the company name, you know your local listings. That's largely based on reviews. Twelve percent of your rankings is based on reviews. The reviews are front and center on all mobile searches. Like it's super obvious on Google how people are consuming it. On Facebook, a lot of it has been consumed through those notifications. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, but it's a very proactive consumption. So Instead of someone having to go out there and search for, you know, you know, window washing company X, um, they're getting drip fed your yeah. reviews of your company every time one of their connections leaves a review. Yeah. That's ads pretty, yeah. yeah, 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 and it's free. All you have to do is ask for the review. Yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy. Well, if people don't know you're actually in Canada. What part of Canada uh, do you live in? Uh, we're on the west coast of Canada, um, just outside Vancouver. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah. Cool. So uh, temperature-wise, your spring, when does your spring kind of start up there? Spring? Yeah, like, like an a, actual, a hey. Winter starts again. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> no, it's not bad up here. It's it's spring in, you know, March, April. That's yeah, not bad. yeah. You can still ski until May, which is pretty sweet. Um, nice. Yeah, it is a good spot to live. Mountains are awesome here. Yeah, people are good. Lots of yeah. lots of space. Yeah. yeah. Never seen an Arctic fox running around though. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was one, but you don't know what happened to it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, hey, it's a, it's a good spot. Come up to visit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Canada is just awesome. Anyway, it just. It's so clean and nice. I don't know. Every time I'm there, it's like it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, we say thank you a lot. Sorry a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All we get to we get to see the memes of you know people holding doors for like Canadians holding doors. Nobody ever goes through the door. They just keep holding the door for the other person and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, believe it or not, that kind of happens. It's uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, my wife's British, and uh, yeah, it was it it's it, it's culturally different. Yeah, my uh, dad's side of the family are all uh, in aurora out there in uh, toronto so uh yeah it's a cool spot too yeah, yeah. awesome different well but... anything else about yeah go ahead no no that's what i was just gonna say i just appreciate you kind of coming on and and um you know i know people are gonna have questions and if you are watching and you have any questions comment down below on facebook uh or youtube or on any of the platforms and we'll try to get to answer but uh tell us your contact info if somebody wants to reach out directly to you what's your email that kind of thing yeah so email easy lars l-a-r-s at nicejob.co um for any questions at all you can reach out straight there or you can go to hello at nicejob.co and then whoever on the team's you know freest will answer you right away 
Uh, that one's actually even better. And then um, company website, nicejob.co. So, you know, check it out. There's a blog there that actually has a ton of useful information uh, about reviews. So if you just want to educate yourself, uh, that blog there has a lot of articles with some of the best-selling authors about customer service as well that have nice. jumped on and co-authored on our blog there. So there's a lot of uh, a good content on there. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming in and chatting with me, and uh, I know you're passionate about reviews, so... And 30 minutes isn't enough time, I know, but uh, if anybody's got any questions on anything... I can't believe that was 30 minutes. You told me 30 minutes. I was like, oh, what are we going to do? And, uh, that, was, that was done already. Wow. I know. Yeah. See, when you're passionate about something, you just it flows, right? I've got more to say. <laughs> all right. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. No, but if you do have questions, like I said, reach out to any of us. My email is josh at window cleaning resource. And if you're still watching... Make sure to uh, reach out to us. Uh, definitely comment on this YouTube video. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, it is a great way to win a $50 credit and a swag bag from WCR. Comment down below. Give us a thumbs up. All that good stuff. And my last point to you is if you have any needs for any type of window cleaning equipment, please reach out to me. Um, you can text me direct, 862-312-2026. Uh, that is my cell phone number, so you can call it, text it, whatever. Vox me, Facebook message, smoke signals, smoke signals, doesn't matter. So reach out to me, and as always, I very much appreciate you guys watching and listening. And until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>